So in today's video, we're gonna be talking about all things early extension. That dreaded moving forwards towards a golf ball in transition, which causes all sorts of striking consistencies, club face control issues, and we're gonna talk about all contributing factors towards that. And stay tuned to the end of the video where I'll show you one of my favorite drills in looking to eliminate that dreaded move on the way down. Now, the simplest way to think about early extension is it's all about your ability to keep your pelvis within a box. So what that box is, is when we're setting up, if we have a line from where our armpits would start and where our backside would be, this would be our box. So if our pelvis can stay within the box on the way back and within the box on the way through, then we've got a pretty good chance that we're not gonna early extend throughout the golf swing. So our first port call is a setup. And where we want to begin is our distance away from the golf ball. Now there's two really simple but effective ways in order to measure this. One which I spoke about before is that you can do with any iron or wedge is to place the club down like so. And ensure that you are standing one inch, so your heels are one inch from the back end of the golf club at setup. And that is a really simple way to measure your distance away from the golf ball. Another nice simple way that you can do it is to set up to the golf ball in your golf posture, make sure you're not standing up when you're doing this to start, and have your little finger and thumb out, ensuring that in your golf posture, both are lightly touching the butt end of the golf club and your belt buckle. Both ways are just fine, pick which one you prefer, but that is your distance away from the golf ball to begin with. Number two, and not commonly spoke about, is the foot position. So when we get it set up, conceptually, many people believe that the feet should be aiming straight. However, anatomically, our feet are designed to be fractionally flared out. So simply put, I would want both feet to be pointing out at an 11 o'clock position rather than a 12 o'clock position, which is what it would be if they were looking towards you. Now, the reason we do this is this allows for much more freedom throughout the swing, predominantly pelvic layer and in the uh, joints in the lower half of the body as well. It allows for much better balance throughout the swing and weight transfer as well. So ensuring our feet are at somewhat of an 11 o'clock position with both feet is a really important checkpoint for me at the setup as well. And once we've got those first two things locked in place, the final one is to ensure that we have a correct balance line. So what we're looking for here is when we get set up, we should be able to draw a line through the armpits, edge of the knees and the balls of our feet. And that would show someone who is perfectly in balance. So if we're too far forwards, the armpit might be here and a rarer one being too far back, we might be sitting into our heels a little bit too much. So a really simple way to go about that is once you're set up to the golf ball, if you just rock forwards into the toes, back into the heels, and try and find that middle ground, that's a really nice simple way to try and find a nice medium with the balance and make sure that balance line is in a good space before we swing. Now, before we discuss how we work on the way down, we need to make sure we're moving effectively on the way back, as that will have a large influence on what we see back into the golf ball. So when we look at the pelvis here, we're really looking at the trail hip. Now, where a lot of people go wrong here is conceptually above anything else, they will look at the knees, they will understand that we'll need a, a little bit of knee flex as set up, and they will conceptually believe that they need to maintain that same amount of knee flex on the way back in order to hit a good golf shot. Now, what happens here, especially in the trail leg, when you maintain that knee flex is, you're really gonna lock out this trail hip. Now, that trail hip not only needs to rotate, but it needs to rotate and work up, essentially rotating as that trail side extends. And don't be wrong, there's gonna be a little bit of knee flex in there. But if we're looking at the knees, a healthy way for the lower half to work when we're looking at the knees is yes, that pelvis is gonna rotate and go back. The lead leg is gonna flex a little bit more and this right leg is gonna extend a little bit. That is only natural. So allow that to happen. That's not something you need to consciously think of doing. What you do need to consciously think of doing is really emphasizing what this trail hip is doing. And you can use your hands as I'm showing you here to really get this trail hip moving back and up. Just make sure that right leg doesn't lock out as you do that. Just maintain just a small amount of flex, nothing crazy. Let it move as it naturally should do. And that's a feeling we're looking to create on the way back. So the trail hip works back and up. Just maintain a little bit of flex as I'm essentially loading into this trail side in a good way. So now that we've discussed some key areas to look for at setup and on the way back, now to talk about that drill that I told you about at the start of the video, which is one of my favorite drills looks to control the pelvis ensuring that it operates within that box that we spoke about and essentially looking to eliminate that early extension. A drill that I would call the shin drill. So essentially, I've got an alignment stick here 
It's on a swing plate, but you can get a basket, pop it upside down, just find an angle. And when we're getting set up, we want to ensure that this stick is somewhat halfway through the, uh, from the middle of the trail shin, only about one or two centimetres away, and you're going to be hitting lots of half to three quarter shots doing this, and ensuring that on the way down, you are not coming up onto the toes early, the pelvis and the foot is going towards the golf ball, and essentially seeing early extension. With this drill here, we are essentially training the trail foot to bank, i.e. roll. As it rolls, this left hip will clear. And as the left hip clears, the, foot, the right foot banks, my pelvis will stay behind. So lots of three-quarter shots, just feeling that move in transition and back down into impact. And that's really going to train not only how the trail foot and the left hip moves, but essentially keep that golf swing, keep that pelvis working within that box so that we don't see any ideas of early extension from there. Okay, so getting set up, just behind the stick, now I'm thinking about the right foot bank and as left hip clears, essentially keeping that pelvis within my box and bringing that stripe back so it's a lot more central within the club base. Hope that helps. Any questions, drop a line in the comment section below. Give me a follow on my socials. Until next time, go enjoy your golf.